All right guys, for today's workout, I just did a short leg day as Ezra was awake and he was getting a little bit fussy. So I made sure to do three sets of 10 reps each. So the first thing I did was the single leg lunges. I just used my coffee table because it was low enough. And then I do have five pound dumbbells just to add a little extra weight. The most important thing is just to make sure you activate your core by bringing your belly button to your spine. You don't wanna suck it in. You really wanna just tighten your core. Right, then I moved on to doing dumbbell deadlifts. My form is so bad, guys. I'm still a beginner and working on this, but you wanna make sure your back is as straight as possible. You are going to bend your knees slightly, almost as if you're doing squats. Bring the dumbbells down to the floor, and then as you bring the weights up, you're gonna straighten your back and then thrust your pelvic forward. All right, this one I did a dumbbell squat lift. So you're going to use your dumbbells, one in each hand, and then you're just going to do a regular squat, making sure that the weight is in your heels. And then I do sumo squats with the dumbbells as well. So I just hold one dumbbell at my chest and then squat down, making sure my weight is in my heels. And then I do squat jumps, same thing. Make sure your weight is in your heels. You're going to squat down. And then as you come up, you're going to push through your toes and lift straight up in the air. You don't have to go high, just as high as comfortable for you, making sure to gently come back down into a squat position. And then I end it with dumbbell calf raises. And then I just use this as a circuit. So I go through each exercise once and that's one set. And then I just do it again until I've completed three sets. Good morning, happy Wednesday. I'm so out of breath. I just got done with the workout. Um, I kind of got you okay? lost on our walk slash jog with the dog. I'm not real familiar with certain parts of our area still especially because our area is like on like hills and then it's combined with a ton of like courts and ways and they just kind of like wrap around and meet each other and so I thought I knew what I was doing and then I ended up on a trail I've never been on and I was like I don't know what to do so I actually had to pull out my GPS and find my way back home but then like at the end of the trail was a mound or mound um like a flock of turkeys and they were trying to like attack a cat i feel so bad so i'm kind of glad i got lost that way because as soon as um they saw the dog they turned around and like left the cat alone but the cat was so scared i've like never seen that before i'm going to make breakfast real quick my hair is also different it's in pigtails because i decided to take this opportunity of being home um and try something new i have wanted my curls back um if you guys don't know i have very mixed hair um, um, it's best described as like 2B, 3A type, like in between that. It just depends on what part of the hair you're looking at. But I used to have really big like ringlet curls and they're gone through to like bleaching and um, hot tools every day and everything else. So I want to take the next three weeks and do like no heat. So last night I took a shower and um, I just blow dried it with cold air, um, just the roots. And then I braided it and I slept in the braids like this. So. I'm gonna leave it like this um, today. I don't have any like anti-frizz or mousse or all the products that you actually need to like do that curly girl method, but I do have an update about the brain tumor um, and stuff. So I have a phone call. It actually was yesterday um, with the endocrinologist. Are you okay? Get all that gunk out. I was filming yesterday, but we ended up not doing anything. So I can update you guys on that too, but I need to take care of him real quick before I update anybody. <laughs> the kids right now we came up with a little game plan today to stay productive um i'm gonna do a little bit of makeup because i'm the type of person makeup isn't like a need for me to feel beautiful or confident or anything like that i just like makeup but it definitely helps me feel more productive throughout the day and yesterday was such a lazy day i'm gonna get ready and talk to you about what my doctor has said eric is gonna be doing um shipped for a couple of hours today just as extra income because you guys don't know my husband is out of work right now so yeah that's the 
game plan. If you guys don't know, I'll just like rewind a little bit. So when I was 15, I had a brain tumor. I talk about this in depth in another video. I'll go ahead and link that for you. So this year, um, I did all of my appointments for like my yearly like checkups, physicals, like well checks and stuff. It's really good um, to do that every year just to make sure you're healthy. And since I had gone so long without treatment, they wanted to see and assess where the tumor was at and everything else. They did some blood work. Blood work came back abnormal. Um, so they sent me to do like an MRI. I had to check my cortisol levels, which that came back high. And then I got the call um, the day before yesterday. So I think it was Monday. She was gonna be sending my results to the endocrinologist and then they were gonna do an appointment. So yesterday at like 8 a.m. they said I had an appointment at 10 a.m. Um, for a phone call appointment because they don't want people going into the hospital if they don't have to. I just did an over the phone appointment to go over all of like my results and stuff and what's going on. And so here we are. One one thing that I was really concerned about was if you guys saw that video too, it's like the second video, I had to go back for that cortisol test. They were as confusion on what I was taking. So they kept asking me if I took medication or if I had gotten a shot before taking like the blood draw. And I was like, that's not what I was told to do. I was just told to come in before eight o'clock and get my blood drawn, which is what I'm doing. So they did the blood draw. It came back as like a normal range being a zero to a 1.5. And my range came back at um, an 11.6. So the doctor called and said that was abnormal and everything else. And that was the one thing I was really concerned about. Um, another thing with this tumor that happens is you have high prolactin levels, but we already knew that was going to be hard to check because I'm a breastfeeding mom. And so she, the endocrinologist said that my levels actually for a breastfeeding mom were a little on the lower side. So it came back at 31, which if you're not breastfeeding, that is high, but I am breastfeeding. And she said, I was surprised it wasn't higher. Um, and then she goes, but your cortisol was fine. And I was confused. And I was like, what do you mean my cortisol was fine? <laughs> like she told me yesterday it was high. And she was just like, oh yeah, the doctor ordered the wrong test for you. I guess it was like a stress depression test because cortisol causes, it's like your stress hormone. And so if you're exposed to cortisol for too long, you can have high stress levels, high anxiety, depression, all of that, which I have postpartum depression and anxiety. And so I did read that cortisol causes those issues. And so for me, in a way, I was kind of excited because I felt like I had an answer to why my anxiety was so high and why I just can't kick the postpartum depression this time around. But she said it was normal. So I'm back to square one on that. And that's just post baby hormones, I guess. And then the best part, which I wanted to cry yesterday after I got off the phone when she told me because I have been dealing with this brain tumor for 16 years now. And it's just the worst. It causes headaches at any time. Like I start to get any type of like blurry vision or migraines or anything like that. Like it's always in the back of my head that the tumor is growing and I don't want to go back on the meds because the medication is not the funnest. Like for me, and I told the doctor about this and she said that's normal and usually that just means it's too strong for the person so they have to adjust the dosage but it causes like dizziness and just like basically I walk around all day in a foggy haze I can't really concentrate and as a mom of two like I can't have that and so I did not want to go back on to the medication the which I think I said the tumor was smaller um she said the last MRI they have my tumor was 1.2 centimeters which I thought it was seven millimeters she said it was 1.2 centimeters and it has shrank by 50% and it's at like a 0.623 or something like that which is crazy so she was just like I don't know if the last time you went on the medication before your daughter was super successful and had a success rate that we weren't having before because I was on um, Dostonex before that. Um, she's like, but the fact that you were able to conceive your son without any type of medication was a good indicator that the medication had worked after your daughter or before your daughter when we when were conceiving her. So um, I don't know what this means for like uh, the future. She says she can't really do anything right now. As of right now, I don't have to go back onto the medication. It says she can't tell me anything further because I'm still breastfeeding. So I'm going to need to go back in for a blood test three months after I'm done breastfeeding. And then she said to make sure there's no type of like sexual stimulation um, or activity or any stimulation of the breast a week before because any type of rubbing or stimulation of the breast will heighten your prolactin levels for everybody. So just to ensure to get a good reading, we don't have that. So that's where we stand right now. That was a little get ready with me. <laughs> Tumor update and stuff. And then this is what my current hairstyle is. It's a little flatter than I'd like. 
but I mean it's not super frizzy I just put in the Paul Mitchell's frizzies having it in a braid helps it from like frizzing out like a lion's nest my hair is like pretty dead that's why this part's stringy so I actually wanted to get my hair cut before all of this happened I don't know when I'll be able to get my hair cut that did not take the full hour I'm gonna help Eric clean up real quick so he can go do his shift runs for a few hours hopefully it's not super crazy out there um he needed to get stuff from the store anyways so we just figured why not make some money while um, you try to shop for yourself if we can get anything and yeah let's get some cleaning motivation guys i don't want to stay here no ain't gonna keep it low now if you want to go let's go let's wrap it up and hit the road i just got an awesome vibe striking the wind up Okay, so we were able to clean all of downstairs. I was able to do a full load of laundry, so it was washed, dried, and put away. And then there's another load currently washing, and then the dishwasher is going as well. My little Yoda backpack going on. It's 11.45, I gave Aria her food, so she's having the same thing as the other day, peanut butter jelly with raisins and Cheez-Its. So that's what she wanted to eat today, and then we're probably gonna do a nap. I'm gonna be making some Irish nachos. Um, we went to have this yesterday for St. Patrick's Day, because that's part of our tradition, but we didn't have all the stuff, so I'm just gonna make it for lunch today, and then we have a ton of leftovers that we're just gonna be eating tonight. All right, guys, these nachos are not authentic Irish nachos. I talk about that a little bit later. They're definitely just loaded nachos. Eric called them a Santa Fe nacho, but they're super good. So you're going to start cooking up some pieces of bacon. I just did four pieces since I was making a smaller amount. Also, I am currently holding the baby, so you'll hear some extra noises going on. And then you wanna go ahead and open and drain a can of black beans and a can of corn. I just used half a can, so you're not gonna use the whole thing, so you can save the rest for later. And then you're gonna wanna chop some green onions up, making sure to keep the greens and the whites separated. And then don't forget that you're cooking the bacon and burn it like I did. It wasn't too bad, um, but you want it to be crispy, not burnt. You should be able to cut it with a fork. And then once your bacon is cut up and crumbled, you can add your corn and beans to the frying pan. Just kind of mix it together until it's warm, usually about one to two minutes. And then I just go ahead and dump in my chips into it. I try to mix it around so this way some of the chips hit the bottom of the pan and some of the ingredients try to go to the top of the pan. Layer it with cheese and then you're gonna bake it in the oven at 350 for about seven minutes or until the cheese is melted. And then you can top it with whatever you'd like. I just did sour cream, some guacamole, and jalapenos. And then I did add a little extra cheese and a little extra corn and beans to the top. Hey 
I started digging and realized I forgot the green onions. It looks so much prettier with the green onions on top, but I ate some of it, so not that pretty anymore. Okay, they're not authentic Irish nachos. Um, I think what makes it Irish nachos is you use potatoes instead of chips. So I'm pretty sure I just did loaded nachos, but they're still so good, you guys. And like for fun family nights, I know for like my family growing up on Fridays usually was like a fun dinner, like nachos, tacos, a little more carefree than the jam-packed nutritional dinners. Um, so that's definitely something you can bake up in one pan if you have a pan that can go into the oven and you can just place it in the center of your table and have like a family night, just kind of like eat from that pan onto your plates and stuff. And then I didn't do a lot of jalapenos, I'll probably add extra, Eric doesn't like jalapeno. Um, and then you can always add like extra cheese or even like a cheese sauce if you wanted to, but I like it just like that because I think it's so good. Ezra Michael, Ezra. No. Come here. You guys are getting too big. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay. Ezra, let's see. Okay. What? Okay, let's separate you two. All ready. Use your hand to pick it up. Good job. I know you have to play with it so it's not as sticky. Okay, I immediately regret this activity. <laughs> okay, if you're looking for an activity that's gonna last a while, this is it because it gets stuck on your hands for a good 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and you freak out for your life um, for a second, but it asks for like five milliliters of the slime activator. It definitely needs more. So as a parent, I would say to test a small bit out and if it doesn't look like this, it's not ready and then just add like a couple drops at a time um, and mix it before you hand it to your kids because my hand was stuck with the like slime and then her hand was stuck with the slime. The baby was crying. It was just a mess. Probably why Eric doesn't like this stuff. He told me not to get it. <laughs> <laughs> but you had already brought it home. I know, but you told me not to buy it before. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. See, see what happens when you don't listen to your husband? I know. I should probably start listening to my husband. <laughs> three, the kids are still asleep, so they have been asleep for about an hour and a half now. Um, we're not really doing much. I didn't even realize that my husband left, so I think he had an order, and he probably thought I was sleeping because I said I was tired and I wanted to take a nap, and I wasn't able to. I was just laying down with the kids, so the way Ezra slept better because you guys know he has been sick he does not have the virus he actually caught a cold um, over the weekend he just catches colds easily and I guess within a baby's first year they get up to six colds so I called his doctors and everything else due to like his symptoms and they did like a video appointment because Kaiser does that they think he's fine it's just upper respiratory um, nasal drip and all of that so hopefully it doesn't form into anything further it does look like he's at the tail end of it though and he just has that lingering cough which I'm sure some of you heard earlier so I just wanted to address that and say my baby is fine but I'm gonna just take this time to clean up the kitchen um, and start doing some work I have some really fun videos planned out for you guys things have changed because of everything going on I'm not able to get out to the stores like I wanted to so like I wanted to do um, an Easter basket for Aria and I don't honestly don't even know what I'm getting the kids for Easter that's the least of my worries right now and I may be doing Veda Veda is like my vlogmas where I vlog every day in April so that should be interesting so I want to take this time while the kids are still asleep and organize everything but thank you again for hanging out with us I'm so glad I can finally update you guys on the tumor and I'm so glad that it has shrunk thank you for all of the positive messages and prayers you guys were sending about my health you guys have no idea how much it means to me but as always I love you and I will see you in the next one